I believe that my story, a story that ultimately led me to Harvard Law School and into public service, is one that shouldn't be the exception. It should be the rule. We should be able to look every child in Texas dead in the eye and promise them that no matter where they're from, we are going to make sure that they succeed. But we can't make that promise right now, and it's not because of you. It's because our state is not providing the support that you need. We are failing them. Our data shows us that by 2020, over 60% of Texas jobs are going to require some kind of education beyond high school. And yet today, Texas has the highest number of adults without a high school degree, 18% of our adults. And the predictions are, by 2040, 30% of adults in the state of Texas will not have a high school diploma or its equivalent if we don't do something to turn things around here. At the same time, of course, college tuitions are rising and student debt is skyrocketing, and yet the state is pulling back on the financial aid that it once supplied. It is harming not only each individual child who can't make their dreams of a higher education come true, it's harming our very future. It's harming our very workforce. But I have a plan to put us on a better path. I will build Texas by fighting for our communities, not against them. And I will build a 21st century economy that works for all hardworking Texans. I will implement, and I am committed to this, full day, quality, pre-K for every four-year-old in this state. And I will make sure, you know, we all hear the folks talk about the fact that, well, that's not really a worthwhile investment, and it doesn't have long-term sustainable results. Well, it would if we made sure that in kindergarten and in first grade and in second grade and in third grade, our students were getting the kind of support they need to continue the successes that they began with in a strong pre-K program. And as your governor, I am committed to making sure that our student-teacher ratios give our students what they need, that teacher aides are restored to our classrooms, that reading specialists are restored to our classrooms. And I will work very hard to make sure that college is more accessible and affordable. In my plan, I am challenging us to work together over the course of the next few years to double the number of dual credit classes and early college high schools across this state so that more students will be like me as first generation college students, able to see and understand that college can belong to them too. And they can graduate from high school either with a strong career and technical degree or with two years of college under their belt and only two years that they will have to pay for in this incredibly increasing high cost tuition that we have here. And perhaps more important than anything, and certainly formed by my six years in the Texas Senate, sitting on the Public Education Committee. You may know, by the way, that I was formerly a part of the committee for my first four years in the Texas Senate. And then after my filibuster in 2011, Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst unceremoniously removed me from the Public Education Committee. But Jennifer and Brock can tell you that I continued to go to every public education committee hearing. I sat at the dais, I asked my questions. And most importantly, most importantly, I listened because you know best. Our teachers, our educators, our administrators, our school board members across this state know best what the challenges are and where the opportunities lie if only the state will be the partner that it needs to be. And one of the things that I have heard 
loud and clear from every one of you, from every parent, from every administrator, and from many young people, is that we need to get out of our teacher's way and let them teach and test less. You may have read Thomas Ratliff, one of our school board, state board of education members recently writing an article about the fact that we need to rid ourselves of no child left behind. And I think you probably understand that that particular law is what is keeping our feet to the fire on these standardized tests. And the only way we're going to find relief from them is to find relief from that. And I am so proud that we have a state board member like Thomas Ratliff who is fighting for that very cause. And I'll make sure that our teachers don't have to dig into their own pockets to buy school supplies for our kids. <laughs> Education, of course, is a promise that we make to our children. We tell them to stay in school, to study hard, and they can become anything that they dream. But public education is a promise that we make to each other and to the generations who will follow us. It's a promise that says if you build your factory here, you will find plenty of qualified men and women to work in it. It's a promise that says raise your family here, and no matter where you come from, your kids can go far. It's a promise that says in this state, no one gets left behind or counted out, because that's who we are. That's the promise of Texas. It's a promise that's in our Constitution. It's actually the only constitutional mandate to the Texas legislature to provide a free, effective system of public education for every child in this state. And while I stood and fought to keep those $5.4 billion in cuts from our classrooms, Greg Abbott has been fighting in court for the last three years, fighting to keep them in place. And make no mistake about it, he believes in those cuts. So much so that in recent weeks, he even tried to get the judge overseeing these years long of trials removed because he knows the decision is not going to go his way. And it shouldn't go his way because our schools are underfunded and we do need to do something about it. It is our job to restore that promise to our children. And it's because of that promise that a 19-year-old girl finding herself alone in a mobile home with a small child and then a small apartment afterward, sometimes literally praying in the dark on how she would turn her lights back on. It's that promise that lifted me out of that situation to where I am today. And I'm so committed to keeping that promise for every generation of Texans. My story, of course, is only possible because public education created a ladder for me. And I certainly didn't climb that ladder, only now to lift it up and not provide that same ladder for every child in this state. I will not leave the children of this state behind. But for too long, insiders in Austin have. As I said before, my opponent has defended those overcrowded classrooms and teacher layoffs and public school closings. And he's even talking not only about not easing back on that gas pedal of standardized testing, but instead actually putting them in place for four-year-olds. And right now, of course, we are awaiting the final decision of that particular litigation. After he speaks this afternoon, I encourage you to ask him why he's fought against our schools, our students, and our educators at every turn. When someone asked him last week, he tried to deny it, but the facts don't lie, and neither do our educators. This February, Susan Slider, a 25-year teaching veteran, declared that she'd had enough with overtesting, so she left her teaching job in Cambridge, Massachusetts. In her nationally publicized resignation letter, 
Susan observed that as burdens of standardized testing grew, her students suffered. She wrote, and I quote, I recognized many of these behaviors as children shouting out to the adults in their world, I can't do this, look at me, know me, see me, help me. Finally, Susan concluded no longer could she endure a classroom consumed by tests. And she concluded, I felt then and I feel now that my job left me. The view of the classroom as a place where the joy of learning is replaced by teaching to the test is apparently how Greg Abbott sees our schools. But I want you to know that the people in this room form my vision for Texas schools because I know that you are the real experts. So I have been listening to you. I've listened all the times that you've said, enough with over-testing, enough with the insiders, and enough with the lip service. And I know you know well enough to see through lip service. As your governor, I commit to you that I will continue to do as I have done these past six years. I will carry your voices with me. I will consider the challenges that you face in your classrooms every day. And I will see you for who you are, people who are committed to making a difference in the lives of children across our state. And perhaps most importantly, I will demonstrate to you and I will fight for you that we will esteem you as we once did. In Texas, you probably know, the teacher salaries are about $8,000 a year below the national average. And in a state as big and as strong, and don't we love to brag about our economy here, I think we can do at least average for payment of our teachers in this state. <laughs> Texas needs to throw open the doors of opportunity for our children. We need to affirm the promise that built our state, innovated our workforce, and drove our economy, the one that says no one gets left behind or counted out, that with hard work and grit and perseverance, where you start won't determine how far you can go, and that every voice and every story matters. It's a promise that's at the foundation of our schools, of our students, of each of you, who are here today. And with your help, it will be the promise of our future. I am looking forward to the privilege of fighting alongside each and every one of you, starting in the legislative session in 2015 as your governor, and I commit to you. I won't forget a moment of what you do and how important you are. God bless you all, and God bless Texas. Thank you. Thank you.